Welcome inside our Champion Chevrolet NSN studio. This is episode five of The Jared Lucas Show. He's Jared Lucas. I'm Alex Margulies. I want to thank, of course, uh, our sponsors of this program. Our first segment is sponsored by Key Acura of Reno. And Jared, uh, good morning after what was a pretty wild game last night against Colorado State. So you were saying, I mean, that, that was one you guys had to have. Yeah, we almost felt like our, our backs were against the wall, uh, you know, dropping three in a row. We knew it kind of wasn't our character, but for us, we kind of went back to last year, knowing that we didn't have an opportunity to bounce back from a couple losses we took at the end of the season last year. So to be able to have an opportunity to bounce back and making the most of it uh, was great for us and be able to get a win uh, at home. That was awesome. I saw you a couple times in the game. You had kind of like a ferocious kind of look in your face. I mean, were you just on a different level in terms of just your intensity in the game? I knew I had to take my leadership to another level. Uh, I know that you know if I bring the energy, and a lot of my teammates will follow. And then also with the crowd, I knew I had to do my best to get the crowd into it. Because when I think about opposing road crowds, um, anytime the other team is on offense, or if we're on the road, I mean the other crowd is on their feet, roaring. But Lawler did a great job last night to be able to help us get some defensive stops towards the end of the game. You guys had one of your best defensive performances of the season, I think, when you think about what Colorado State can do with the basketball. I mean, they're the top, I think they were number two in off offensive uh, efficiency, like 59%, uh, shoot over 50% from the field. Yet you guys held them under 30% shooting in the first half. Isaiah Stevens uh, only scored eight points in the game. He didn't have a single point in the first half. Just talk about the way you guys came together defensively, especially after what happened in Wyoming. I think you've you got to look at some of our guys in the roster, but also got to take a look at uh, Corey Barnett. He did a good job preparing us. And then I think Trey Coleman did a great job on Isaiah Stevens. We had guys like Daniel Foster uh, help contribute to stuff like that, as well as Nick Davidson, KJ Himes on the glass, getting some block shots. So good overall team effort. And I think, once again, guys be, being the best they can be in their roles has done us wonders and will continue to do great things for us. All right. Speaking of Daniel Foster, he is our special guest on today's show. We'll have him. Uh, a little bit later on. Uh, looking forward to having him on the program. When it comes to Isaiah Stevens, obviously this is a guy that can fill it. You know, he scores almost 20 a game. Uh, he's the all-time leading scorer in, in Rams history, specifically on him. What was the effort? I mean, maybe it was Trey and, like you said, it was a couple other guys, but what was the effort to try and lock him down the way that you guys did? Uh, we wanted to make things difficult for him. You know, we know that he can score on all three levels. He was shooting 47% from three coming into the game. Uh, I believe Trey, Trey held him 0 for 4 from three. Uh, and then we knew that he did a great job fighting his teammates. Last night, eight points, 10 assists. But to be able to hold him 4 for 16, you mentioned it being Colorado State's all-time leading scorer. And the effort that Trey did to set the tone for us was, uh, I think, kind of the key to the game, being able to slow him down. And the guy who right now is probably still one of the candidates for Mountain West Player of the Year. So great job by Trey. I want to talk about uh, Trey Coleman. I, I had Bill Duaney, I, I filled in last night on the radio, and he was our post-game show interview. And, and, and Bill called uh, Trey kind of the quarterback of the defense. He called him a maestro. You know, he, just the way that he can see the floor and communicate to you guys and kind of lead you guys at, on defense. That's not something maybe the casual fan is going to notice. You know, you notice a little bit on defense, but people pay attention to scoring. Right. Take us through what Trey does on defense to really make the entire team better and not even just him as an individual, but how he is able to kind of lead the defense. There's so many little things that kind of go unnoticed, and I think it's not only Trey. Daniel Foster is one of our better defenders as well. When you take a look at both those guys, I think their IQ is a different level, especially on the defensive end. With Trey, he does a good job using his length, uh, being able to slow guys down, especially with Isaiah Stevens, a six-foot guard. So when you put a 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, guy like Trey, uh, it slows him down. And then Daniel Foster, I think, is probably one of the quicker guys off the first step, um, slowing guys down. The other night against Neat Clifford, I think he tried going left one time. Daniel Foster, one step, cut him off, <laughs> bumped him in the chest. So it's guys like that um, who I, obviously I don't think people realize, you know, because in the stat sheet, a lot of those numbers don't totally. show up. But they're guys that are inf really do a big part for our team. And, I, and you're talking about Daniel. Again, we're going to get him on the show. Uh, but – it is that kind of like strong safety, right? That linebacker where maybe it's not like the sexy points. Like you're not going to see Daniel score 15 points. You're not going to see him necessarily get double doubles and stuff like that. He might not even score in a game, but his impact of the game. I know that's something even talking uh, yesterday to Len Stevens, former head coach, and he does the color on the radio broadcast. He's always talking about Daniel and the way that he is able to impact the game on defense. And he's always kind of watching what he's doing. Yeah, it's not only defense. Defensively, he, he does a great job. But last night, if we go back to the end of the first half, uh, we had the ball 38 seconds left. 
Uh, I think Trey missed a shot. Yep. Daniel Foster goes flying. Offensive gets, board. Gets offensive board. We get the ball for the last shot. Obviously, if we don't get that board, Colorado State could come down. We were up five or six at that point. Could have cut it to two or three. Daniel Foster gets a rebound. Uh, I was able to score a bucket. We go up eight into the half. Little plays like that that often don't get recognized, but, I mean, he's done a hell of a job for our team. All right, so you've had some pretty crazy streaks this year. You had 31 free throws to start the season. Then you got to 34, uh, which tied the record. So congratulations on that. I know yeah. you probably want the record on your own, but being tied with Nick Fizikas is not a bad deal yep. uh, to be tied for that record. But then, and then last night, you hit 10 consecutive field goals. I don't even know if you realize that, but you I hit 10 that. straight. You missed your first two, and then you hit 10 in a row, wow. which – I, th I think I was talking to Aaron Juarez. He had said your your personal record, I think, is 11 straight made field goals. So you were that. That's how dialed you were. I don't even think wow. you even realized it. No, I didn't even know that. But you know, my teammates did a great job, and I think the ball at one point almost felt like uh, felt like an ocean or, or, <laughs> for for a little while. Um, it's like in baseball where they say it's like you're hitting a beach ball. Like yeah. do you just feel like when you're in that groove, like. There was that one three that was pretty deep. I know you just kind of chucked it up and it splashed. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. when you know things are going, right? Yeah. I, I mean, I knew that, uh, you know, after I hit a couple, I had the, the and one. And then, you know, I, I saw the coach throw up two as in their going zone. And, uh, you know, I, I knew as soon as I touched the ball, I didn't even care where I was at, <laughs> I could have been crossing half court. It was going up. It was time for a heat check. And, you know, I was pretty deep and it still went in for me. All right, let's talk about Keenan Blackshear because the, the, the level of difficulty of some of the shots that he made was really impressive to me. And this is something that when Keenan's on, he just hits shots that nobody else on the floor can. Talk about the way that he was able in some of those one-on-one -on -one situations, even being doubled, I mean, making shots all over the floor. He obviously had a huge impact in last night's game. Yeah, I think his change of pace is really hard to guard. And I remember last night, um, you know, I think he's got the switch under their four or five, Joel Scott. Uh, you know, mixed, mixed him up a little bit and then got him with a shot fake uh, into a jumper. But that was consistently all throughout his mid-range game really shined last night. Uh, once he got into the low post as well, getting to some of his turnaround fades, uh, you know, he really looked great last night for us and he really helped lead us to victory down the stretch the last uh, eight or ten minutes of the game. All right, so Nevada gets a 77-64 win over Colorado State. Wolfpack now 16-4, and 3-3 and in conference. The Rams now 3-3 and in conference as well as they drop to 15 and four. Coming up next, we're gonna talk about the game this Sunday at the Pits in New Mexico. The Wolfpack a chance to knock off another ranked opponents. We'll have more of the Jared Lucas Show coming up next. All right, the Jared Lucas Show rolls on, brought to you by Key Acura of Reno. Jared Lucas, Alex Margulies. Got a great story to share from last night, uh, Jared. So. As I understand it, you actually swapped out your shoes for a brand new shoe like 90 minutes before the game. Like you warmed up with one shoe, but then you actually broke in a brand new shoe. It worked. You scored 28 points. You hit 10 in a row. So I'm guessing you're going to stick with the shoe. You got to tell us the story. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to I'm going to stick with the shoe for the rest <laughs> of the year. But um, first of all, I saw Tylen Pope wearing uh, these Donovan Mitchell shoes, and I'm going, man, those look really good. Like, ah, dude, I want them. And then I go online and I bought a pair. You know, I was like, oh, I'll get here next week. Right, I'll wear, right. wear, wear them whenever. And then he goes, oh, I got them at the Sparks Outlets. And I go, oh, no way, dude. Let me get on the phone. I, I need them. I want them tonight. <laughs> right. So I didn't think we were, I was going to get it to that night, but I was like. like we got to try. I was let's like, I'm going to try. Let's, let's see I, if we I, can so make I it work. I called one of our GAs, um, Trey Moore, and I was like, hey, Trey, I need you to do everything possible to get me this shoe tonight. Mind you, there's 88, 88 minutes on the game clock for tip. <laughs> Uh, so he was able to get somebody to run over there uh, to the outlets, get the shoe for me. And in 45 minute mark, when I came back in the locker room, had a box of shoes sitting sitting right there, uh, laced them up, and uh, that, was it. that was the end of the story. So maybe Trey Moore, maybe he's the real MVP of, of last night's game. I shot him a text last Dang, night, and that's, I said, that's "Man, big time. you're the real MVP, dude." Okay, but so you were saying, I was like, "How are you going to break in a brand new shoe?" But you were telling me you actually have custom insoles yeah. for the shoes, so it's not like you have to really break them in. No, I, I, I don't necessarily really have to break them in. Of course, most shoes, and you want to get. I'd some always comfort, break. Right? I'd yeah. always break them in first. But I don't know. I just had a feeling about those shoes. Like Dang. I said, I saw Tylen Pope wearing them, and I go, oh, "Man, those look great on feet." What do I have to do to wear them <laughs> tonight? And Trey Moore was able to get the job done Dang. for me. Some of the inside secrets you only hear right here uh, on the Jared Lucas Show. All right, uh, let's break into what's next. A big one Sunday at the Pit, New Mexico. Uh, this is one of the toughest places to play in America. You guys got to win there 
last year, I guess. Let's go back to last year's game. Keenan Blackshear hits the game-winning shot. Um, what was the atmosphere like playing there for the first time and, and being able to get, get a win uh, against the Lobos at the point? I know that's not an easy place to do that. Well, I think there's 14 or 15,000. The game was sold out when we played there, and obviously these fans aren't uh, the biggest fans of maybe Coach Alford or Noodles. You know, maybe they're fans, maybe they're not. But uh, it's always a tough place to play. It gets pretty loud in there. And to be able to win like we did last year was great. But that's in the past, and we know we got to handle business against, against, once again, another top 25 team in the country in New Mexico. I guess what, what does that kind of show that you're able to be able to go into an environment like that? I mean, majority of the team is back. So, you know, this is a group of guys that knows that they can go into a place, an environment like that, and win. Does that give you a little bit of confidence knowing that, you know, we can play in, in and win in an environment like that. I think it gives us a little confidence, but we also understand that both us and New Mexico are pretty similar with veteran guard play. Uh, I think Jalen House and Jamal Mashburn, and then you now can include Donovan Dent, uh, three guards who played in this conference and we played against last year. So uh, those guys have experience. We have experience. Um, we know what it's like to win at the pit, and hopefully we can do it again. But they're going to be a, a really good team. It's going to be tough to win there. So hopefully we can handle business. Yeah, and maybe right now in New Mexico playing the best basketball in the Mountain West Conference. They came off a uh, win last night in San Jose, 95-75. to 75. Uh, They blew out San Diego State, one by 20 on their home floor. Um, when you've had a chance to watch them, I know you guys like to sit and watch a lot of games. You know, what is kind of your main takeaway seeing the Lobos on film? Well, all three of those guards right now seem like they're clicking. I know that Jamal Mashburn and Jalen House and Donovan Dent all had their own stints where they were missing some games due to injury. Uh, so they all never really got to play, play with each other, and I believe this may, may be their fourth or fifth game of all those guys playing together. And those are three high-level guards. And then when you take a look at JT Toppin, their freshman kid, who I believe right now is on some draft boards, averaging 13 and mm. 9, uh, we're going to have our hands full, and hopefully we can uh, try to slow some of these guys down. All right, so Sunday night, uh, it'll be a 7 o'clock local time here in northern Nevada, 8 o'clock uh, out there uh, in New Mexico and Albuquerque. Uh, right now, again, the Lobos ranks 25th in the country, so a chance for the Pack to go back-to-back with top 25 wins. Uh, I want to talk about some of the games you've had so far this year. I mean, what have you made so far of the Mountain West Conference? Do you think it is a tick maybe above even the competition of last year now that you've seen Boise State, you've seen San Diego State? Right now, you know, people are projecting six teams from the league maybe to get into the NCAA tournament. What, how have you felt about just the league as a whole? I believe the Mountain West this year is better than it was last year. And then when you take a look at the guards, especially coming back in this conference, Colorado State, Isaiah Stevens, I mentioned New Mexico's, uh, Boise State's, us. Uh, I know I missed San Diego State with Butler. Uh, I mean, there's plenty of good players. And then you got guys that kind of come onto the scene late, like Jaden Ledee, who's probably going to be All-American this season. Uh, this conference, I believe, is the premier conference in the West uh, and even in the country. I know that, that when you take a look at our non-conference, with uh, Colorado State beating some pretty good teams. We got a couple good wins out of conference against Power Fives. Uh, you know, the conference handled business in the non-conference, which kind of makes it now um, look pretty good. All right. Uh, long road still ahead in the Mountain West Conference, and Wolfpack on much better footing now after getting that win last night against Colorado State, improving to 3-3. Three and three. All right, we're going to go down to our Legends Bay Casino Lounge, powered by Circus Sports. Next, we've got Daniel Foster in the house. The Aussie joins the program when we return. All right, back here on the Jared Lucas Show. This segment brought to you by Bradley Drendel and Janae. As promised, Daniel Foster joining us here in studio. First off, would you ever change your shoes out to a brand new shoe like <laughs> less like an hour before tip off? Have you ever done that? No, nah, like no. Nah, brand new shoe out of the box? No, nah, I can't say I've done that. I need to break <laughs> them in a couple sessions before, I think. Were you surprised that Jared did that? Honestly, I just heard, that was the first time I heard about it just now, too. I mean, I seen him wearing them during the game, and I asked him, like, where'd you boys get those from? So I might have to go uh, grab them, not now before the game, but, you know, maybe a couple of days early. I think I might have to get, get a pair for the whole team at this point. Yeah, we maybe, we'll, maybe we'll have to talk to our equipment guy. Get yeah. <laughs> uh, Daniel, um, some really cool stories for you. We, actually, one that you didn't even know is that uh, Daniel's parents, so your dad's from Australia, your yeah. mom's from the Central Valley, kind of Fresno area. They yeah. met at Oregon Tech, yeah. where your dad played basketball. Uh, you didn't even know that there was this Oregon connection. No, no idea. I mean, it's kind of crazy to hear that. I yeah, know. I know. It, uh, a bit of an odd story, but um, yeah, pretty funny in the end how they met o over in uh, Oregon Tech, fighting hours. 
<laughs> some yeah. fighting house. Yeah. Fighting house. I love the story yeah. though, and and for those of you who have not seen this, I know it's been profiled before, but your parents actually got married yeah. in Reno at the Grand Sierra Resort well before like you would ever even imagine, of course, like yeah, yeah, playing basketball here. Tell us that story. Yeah, so I think that. Uh, like we had been to Reno about like 10, 12 years ago when I was a kid and they probably mentioned it, but you know, I just wasn't paying attention to the case too much. <laughs> um, but then a couple of years ago, I was just driving on the freeway, right? Um, with my girlfriend, Kenna. And I was like, wait, hang on. I'm pretty sure like my parents had mentioned they got married at that, uh, casino there. <laughs> and then sure enough, got on the phone with me rents the next day and asked them, um, and yeah, that, that was the story. And I think it was called the Hilton back then. Yeah, or something. it's so gone through a couple of different. W- yeah, way, way back then. Different changes. I guess uh, they, is it crazy for them? Like thinking about the fact they got married in Reno and they're like, now my son plays basketball there. I mean, they would never have imagined yeah. I'm sure in their wildest dreams. That I mean, I'm sure it was like case. going through the head when all the recruiting process, but I mean, I had honestly no idea. So <laughs> it was, was no connection for me, but they were probably thinking in their head like, oh yeah, it'd be such a cool story and connection. All right, give, give us give us some in, some insight on Daniel, uh, Jared. Give, give us you got any dirt? Uh, well, for Daniel, I <laughs> know that uh, we always like to mess with each other, uh, mess with each other about his accent. He likes to mess with me a little bit about a couple of things. But uh, you know, for Daniel, it's always funny some of his little terms or terminology that you know we yeah, don't you just hear threw one there. I I, I me, like went over my you head. Probably right? went over your head. Me rents. Yeah. Me rents. Yeah. That was oh, good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Me rents. So it's just little things like that. You know, that you hadn't hadn't really. Uh, heard or whatnot and I've always kind of messed with him about uh, being with Australia so anytime I see a maybe Australia NBA player or anything Australia uh, I try to mess with, mess with him so like uh, uh, Patty Mills you know uh-huh. guys like yep. that I'm gonna throw, throw those names out there Josh Giddy, one yeah. of the names I bring up too. Wasn't there an Australian this year that was on another team that maybe la- I'm trying to think there was like a uh, Lea Pepe? Oh uh, yeah we played actually a bunch this year yeah um, yeah so Kelly uh, from LMU, yep. actually, like, grew up with him. And He's also from Melbourne? Yeah, yeah, okay. we grew up on the, my dad coached both See, of us. Melbourne. I yeah. like that. Yeah, there you go. I used to broadcast baseball, I still do, but I was in minor league baseball for a long time. We had a lot of Aussies. Yeah. Oh. I had a few parents. Parents like from, from Melbourne. It's like oh, now way. I know how to pronounce. I always correct you, like actually it's Melbourne. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot of people get that wrong. Yeah, yeah. Melbourne. Like I'll... Brisbane. It's not Brisbane. Yeah. Brisbane. Brisbane. Yeah. Brisbane. And there's another kid from Portland. Yeah, uh, who, uh, who Robert was. Tyler Robertson. And okay. then there was a couple, it was one in Hawaii, played for Hawaii, and then there was a couple at Sac State, so a bunch of Aussies over here now. Talk about your journey here in Reno, I mean, right. um, just coming from Australia, to, mm-hmm. to be here in northern Nevada, what has that been like for you, and, and, and now is your, what, four, four years or five years now? No, this is my fourth year. Fourth yeah. year, yeah, I mean, what, what has this been like for you, just as a person to kind of be in this part of the country and play yeah. basketball here, what, what's it been like? Yeah, so I mean, obviously you'd mentioned mom's from here, so um, I'd been to America, you know, quite a bit, visiting family and whatnot. So it wasn't too much of like a massive culture shock. Um, but you know, it's been great fun. I think I've grown a lot as a person, met some great people along the way, and um, you know, really just connected with the community here. So it's been great fun. And Jared was, was lauding your game, especially on the defensive side of the ball, and obviously you had that big offensive rebound. Last mm-hmm. night, as he mentioned, that was kind of a turning point in the game to get that offensive board. That could have been like a five-point swing if you yeah. don't get that. Um, is defense where you take the most pride in your game? Like, where, where do you kind of see your area that you really kind of hone in on the most? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think defensively, uh, like, one, probably my role, you know, on this team, doing all the little things to help us uh, get the win. Might not show up on the stats, but, um, you know, a little impactful thing that can help us t- uh, help the team and uh, put us in a position to win. So, yeah, defensively, something that I try to focus and lock in on. And I think one thing that, that we didn't mention was Daniel's improvement three-point shooting-wise. Mm-hmm. I think last year, I'm not sure what his numbers were last year, but I mean this year he's shooting the ball a lot better than he was. Uh, but I just go to show his work. I mean, most of the time when me and him are in the gym, uh, you know, it's 9 or 10 a.m. Uh, before practice. So he's consistently in there, and he's been shooting the three-ball really well this year too. So that's one thing I didn't mention or we didn't mention. All right. So we've got more with these two. Uh, we're going to do the Would You Rather game uh, to finish out the show. we got some good questions from this. We had Snooki do this a few weeks ago. had some fun <laughs> with that. We're going to put uh, uh, Daniel through the ringer as well. We'll have more of the Jared Lucas Show wrapping up after this. All right, our final segment of the Jared Lucas Show is brought to you by Wolfpack Moving. Daniel Foster, Jared Lucas. We're going to play the Would You Rather game. Uh, let's go first. Would you, would you rather live in a world without music or without movies? Daniel, let's go with you first. Music or movies? Oh, that's pretty that's tough. tough. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm a pretty big movie buff, so I think I would have to go with a world without music. 
M music or movies, uh, Jared? I think world without movies. I don't really watch movies that often. I watch YouTube. Okay. Well, I'm wondering is like, does that mean you can't watch TV at all? I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm not sure how to. No, like, read I think that. it's just, I movies, think it's or movies? just movies. Yeah, I, I, mean, I guess maybe movies. if you give up movies, like you can still watch shows. Like you can yeah, watch like a series. Saying. You can yeah. watch series. I, I think if that's movies. the rule, I'd probably go. I'd probably go movies too because you can fill the rest with that. Uh, on the court, would you rather play with Michael Jordan or LeBron? MJ or LeBron? That's Michael a Jordan. One. He's MJ? got more skill. <laughs> wow. No, I say I'm the opposite. I mean, didn't get to grow up watching him, so I've always been a LeBron fan. So LeBron. LeBron over yeah. over MJ. Uh, okay, Daniel, would you rather not brush your teeth for a week or not take a shower? <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> shower for two weeks or not brush your teeth for a week? Either way, you're going to be funky. Yeah, oh, I don't know. Man. Should ask some of our teammates. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, why thing. have you gone a week without brushing your teeth? Yeah, I don't want to drop no names, but. Uh, oh, wow. Have, you know, yeah. We're working um, on it. Though. Dang. Some, some Somebody, somebody's got some, uh, hi, some hygiene issues? No, you know, yeah. some guys just their preferences are a little different than others. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know. I think maybe. Brush the teeth and then in the shower, you know, you can rinse out your mouth. That's Something true. Like that. You could like figure, figure out a way like to like that. clean the mouth. Yeah, that's, that's, try that's, to do both. That's know. creative thinking. That's right. high IQ. Right that there. is high IQ. I'm that's going. Solid. I'm going with, with what exactly what he said. Because <laughs> like no you shower, like yeah. maybe you accidentally get some soap in your yeah. mouth, yeah. Yeah. You yeah. swish it around. No, like, no toothpaste. You know, maybe you could. You can still do like soap. You can still like do the finger brush. Yeah, it's not gonna be right. You get the job done. All right. Would you rather lose your sense of taste or your sight? Taste or sight? Oh, it would have to be taste. Yeah, it's taste. Just, everything's gonna be bland and. Yeah. I'll ta yeah, probably taste. But at least you can yeah. see some yeah, stuff. You can see, yeah. you know, plenty of beautiful things in life, so <laughs> you, know, you can see that. I, I could see Daniel's face, you know? <laughs> <laughs> what about sense of touch? How would you compare touch? Touch with taste. Mm. Oh. You can't feel anything. Oh, you wouldn't be able to play no sports, huh? Or yeah, no? you'd probably still uh, go to taste, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think I would have to go with that. It's like too. touch, because Daniel hasn't shaved recently, so touch. <laughs> He's Daniel Foster, Jared Lucas. I'm Alex Margulies. Thanks so much for joining the Jared Lucas Show. We'll see you back here in two weeks.